All right, guys. Welcome to our Squad Ops Opscast. I am your host, Creeping. Uh, joined here by Karma Cut and Silent. Tonight we are going to be talking about uh, Postscriptum and uh, our experiences playing the last few of those test weekends. Uh, kind of an overall thoughts, um, what we like about the game, what we you know think might need some improvement, and uh, yeah, should be a good time. So uh, we're just going to do a quick little intro for everybody. Uh, we'll say you know who we are, what we do within Squad Ops, and then we'll end with uh, about how much time we've spent playing over the last couple uh, weeks or the last few weekends that we've been able to play. Um, so I'll just lead things off. My name is Creeping. I'm your regular host here um, for the Ops cast. And I've played, um, I haven't made it to double digits yet in the time played. And most of it's been played as just the basic rifleman or occasionally as a sniper um, or marksman. So uh, I'm probably the least experienced of the three of us, but uh, I definitely, definitely have some thoughts. Uh, so Karma, you want to go next? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Karma Cut. Um, I run the Squad Ops community as the director, um, and I have about... 27 hours on the test servers for postscriptum um i also have a lot of time played about 2000 hours on squad as well um so yeah just gotta have a lot of thoughts about uh postscriptum and the current tests that we've played so far all right and silent want to bring us home yeah hi um silent um etl for both the dev team and event team and i think i uh, logged about 34 hours of the last two play tests all right awesome and before we get started here, I will tell everybody who's listening in the Twitch uh, stream that we are live right now. So feel free to post anything you'd like to in the Twitch chat, and we'll try and answer questions. And if you guys want to help contribute to the discussion that we're having. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, what's everybody's overall thoughts? Uh, like just kind of a general overview. What do you think of the two test sessions that we've had so far? Uh, so Postscriptum has done a great job of setting itself apart from Squad um, since they are using the same off-world core. Uh, so there's a lot of similarities in both the UI and uh, some of the other kind of systems that they're both sharing. Um, but you see a lot of differences as well. And, and, and I think Postscriptum has done a good job of adding a whole bunch of their own unique features that kind of set uh, itself apart from Squad. Silent, what do you think? Yeah, um, I love the game. Um, to be honest, I for me, I like it right now a lot more than than Squad. Um, I grew up playing Day of Defeat um, when I was like fourteen, like two thousand and one, and so this bolt action rifle like gunplay, I uh, I love it. That's what I'm used to. Um, games are fun, uh, even though it's using all the squad assets. Like Karma said, it does feel different, and um, yeah, I. Uh, every day I check the subreddit, their Discord to see if they're having another playtest. Awesome, yeah, I'm I'm very similar in that I definitely it feels like a great fresh uh, breath of fresh air from Squad. Um, so while still feeling familiar because, like you guys said, the off-world core, um, everything seems to have transitioned pretty smoothly um, from one game to the other. But it definitely uh, it feels. Like it has a lot more assets. It feels a little bit more kind of fleshed out in some certain systems. Like I love the fact that there's dedicated asset squads um, and that sort of stuff. So I definitely my I, my overall feelings are very positive for Postscriptum. I'm excited to see where it goes in development. I'm kind of uh, like I'm really excited about the fact that like this is so like alpha right now. Like or it's so early into development that they're not even just letting us play like it's typical early access, but yet it feels like it's already almost like a complete game. Like I, I when I play squad, I, I know what assets and what sort of things feel missing in squad, but I don't really have that same feeling for postscriptum. And maybe that's because I don't have as much time played, but um, other than like a, a really good logistics system and a really good like fob mechanics and that sort of stuff, I I can't really think of a whole lot of like what's missing 
You know what I mean? And I'm sure you guys have some, some, maybe some answers to that question. Yeah, I guess uh, that, that is one of the things I did notice is that I don't know if it's the era that World War II is, that, that postscript is, is set in, and it's that World War II era where there's kind of a fewer, um, I guess, assets to really worry about. Um, you know, you have all those tank models and everything like that and weapons, but for the most part, things are pretty standard and basic um, across the kind of equipment that, that each faction uses. So I don't think they have a lot of ground to cover as far as those kind of features. But there are certain things when I play Postscript them that I feel are lacking or missing. Uh, it does feel like a very fleshed out game asset wise, right? Especially because they're using off world core and they have a, a jump start on a lot of these systems and structures. Uh, the the thing that I feel is really missing is infantry gameplay to an extent. Um, their fob mechanics are a little interesting as well. Uh, I feel like those are kind of lacking. Um, but as far as the things that they're really focusing on is as like uh the hardcore nature of the game and the immersion level of the game those have completely passed all expectations the flyovers with the vehicles uh, with the with the fighters and the bombing runs the the tank gameplay that they're really focusing on is extremely rewarding but there are a couple uh areas that I do note that are 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 pretty lacking for yeah Okay, yeah, so um, oh, go ahead, silent. Yeah, I kind of agree. I'd say the the biggest thing for me, my biggest issue as far as like what's lacking is the spawn system. Um, but it's not perfect in either game of squad or or postscriptum. Right. Um, for me, I think the the biggest glaring issue with postscriptum and squad between postscriptum and squad is that the infantry gameplay in squad feels much more rewarding in the sense that uh you you have an understanding of where the battlefield is in postscriptum a lot of the infantry games end up with no real front line with players either sitting in bushes or isolated from um the important areas of the map and you just are getting caught in these hide and go seek scenarios and whack-a-mole scenarios throughout the entirety of the infantry gameplay whereas i feel in squad it's a little bit more clear as to what direction enemies are coming from and that might be in part uh, due to the spawning system that squad has is because the spawning systems in squad are more static you kind of have a better feel of where to expect contact uh and in postscript them with the mobile spawn points it's so fluid that there's really no front line and really no advantage to keeping a static spawn uh there's more focus on moving that msp around and that in turn just spreads players out in a whole blob across the objective and you're just getting killed from every direction mm -hmm. yeah um kind of i actually think that post krypton is a little bit more rewarding um the fact that there's a lot less optics i think helps you know you're not getting killed from 500 meters away usually um empties or mgs in both games you know they, they wreck um, but I think, you know, just the fact that you, you only get one shot and then you got to, you know, reload that, that bullet. So getting those kills, I think are very rewarding. And the fact that you're not getting killed usually from 500 meters away, like you do all the time, if you're in the open and squad, I think it's a little more rewarding in post I, I think they do a really good job of, of the me mechanics of the actual fighting, like the, the, the bolt action weapons and, uh, the suppression system is on point, but just how the the battlefield is laid out because you're literally in almost every game you're playing as infantry while the gunplay itself is rewarding the engagements as a whole are not you are running back and forth through bushes and while killing the other person mechanically is fun and, and is challenging with this and the bolt uh system the the fact that you are running through bushes back and forth looking for the one dude sitting down or scanning large areas of, of trees just to find the one dude that's prone in the bush it's not very rewarding in my opinion yeah i i agree with that i think a big part of that is, is a spawn system especially on defense when you have to keep your msps and you can't spawn on the point like you would of a fob or a rally in squad um i think that sort of leads to it you know you spawn in by yourself most of the time even though the whole team spawn in there usually you're spawning by yourself or maybe one or a dude who isn't even in your squad that sort of encourages that in my opinion, that, that lone wolfing where you just go find a bush near the point and hide and try and get some kills. I feel like if they maybe did 
change yeah, that up or maybe system. did a wave system. Yeah, like yeah. Rising Storm 2 did. I think or that kind I, of helped for teamwork wise. I still think there needs to be some sort of in between of rally points, fobs on the point, and what we got now. I just don't know what that answer is. I, I think it partly is due to the map design, which I think it's great that we get this kind of historical kind of environment to play in. But the ability to run full sprint through every single hedgerow or bush kind of decreases the amount of, I guess, tactical ability within within the game because you are literally just sprinting the, the terrain doesn't really hinder infantry uh the only thing that really hinders infantry and postscriptum are open fields but when you get a whole bunch of dense um brush and players are running full sprint through it through the brush you can so easily pass through to the other side and and to the end uh to into enemy lines that it just gets you just start getting killed from from the from back from the sides from from places that you previously thought were clear just because you can run full sprint along a hedgerow i would definitely uh agree with uh the hedgerow problem that we run into um those those bush boys man are just so frustrating um the constant like they'll just sit themselves down and then just wait for people to walk by and then but because of uh like silent was saying the fact that um you know most guys are not staying with squads or they're because they're you know, like respawning alone and then they're trying to run back to the engagement but then there's you know somebody hidden in a hedgerow like halfway there and he's just picking off lone stragglers that are trying to get back into the fight and it just it, it's 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 a little unrewarding in that respect um i would pose a question and it's something that i hadn't really thought before about either squad or postscriptum or hell at loose or any of these big tactical shooters that are trying to do um uh this sort of gameplay but do you think that maybe the map could be too big like it could that be contributing think, to the um... fact that like we're not seeing really engagements. We're seeing like skirmishing. We're seeing um, it's you just not have it's one not... blob point to point, which is the same issue that squad currently has. I think it's just the whole capture of the area f through the flag objective game mode is just so outdated. And, and for a game of this scale where you have 40 V 40 and one point to contest, you can, it's really almost impossible to avoid a clusterfuck objective to objective. Uh, there's no tactical play when you're throwing 40 v 40 players, uh, slamming each other into one, you know, 200 meter uh, area on a map. Um, so maybe s making that objective much larger, um, because when you think about the size of these objectives, they're they're relatively small. When you really think about 40 players on either side fighting over this this small area. Um, and it just you're cramming so many bodies into one spot like there's no tactical decisions that really get made outside of you know where do we put the armor and 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 how do we use our airstrikes it's just slamming bodies into each other at that point mm -hmm. yeah i i think i think you may have hit it there with the um the typical aas sort of there's one point we're trying to cap uh, being kind of an outdated game mode. Can can you think of any maybe solutions for Postscriptum that, that might help it a little bit? Like, do you make it just a giant, like, I'm talking like massive flag so that there's actually movement within the flag and sort of tactical I choices think, yeah, being I... made there? Or like, do you shape the flags differently so that it's not just the sphere or square? Like, I, I think that the closest I ever got to a, to a truly, I guess, open and tactical experience was Hell Let Loose's version of territory control. While it wasn't perfect, you still had this whack-a-mole kind of kind of thing going on, and it it did feel a little bit hide and go seek. You had full control over where you want to go and how you wanted to play the map. So there was a lot more of a front line in that sense, which works for World War II. Um, a lot more of a front line and a lot more of an understanding of of where you need to go. Whereas in, in Postscriptum, that option is pretty much removed and you're just mindlessly thrown towards an objective. Um, there's not much thinking 
that really goes on in postscriptum as far as uh, infantry, um, because you're you're locked down to the team wide MSP. So you as a squad leader don't necessarily get the flexibility that you would have with a rally point. Um, and then your uh, your spawns are locked team wide, so it's really hard to un to to have a, a, a experience across the whole platoon that uh combines all these different aspects really fluidly because you're just so clumped together into one ginormous blob with all the uh systems that they have in place as far as spawning okay what what do you guys think about some other aspects of of infantry gameplay um i, I love the suppression go ahead yeah so as far as because i know i've been ragging on it a little bit but as far as like mechanical gameplay like as silent said the bolt action the 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 no optics the uh, suppression system postscriptum does amazingly with all of these things they have the mechanics of each individual gunfight to a very satisfying and challenging uh i guess level which is what i've been looking for and i think a lot of players in squad have been looking for is is a little bit more intricacies as far as the mechanics within a gunfight so they do that extremely well yeah yeah i think the gunplay aside from like what i mentioned about the you know the bold action just the classes themselves um the lat class i think is is feared in in this game versus in squad i don't think they're feared that much anymore with them removing one of their heat rounds um i played i think lat one game and i took out three tanks, two MSPs, and a command vehicle. Um, and I only died not that many times because you get, I think, like three or four piots, two magnetic mines, uh, your gammon bombs. You, you, like that one class alone can wreak havoc without having to resupply. Um, the marksman's, I think, is in a good place. Um, I think in a better place than squad is um, just because there aren't many optics on the field. Um, yeah, I, I just... Like I said, I'm really enjoying the game. Um, and I can't wait for it to come back. And I just think the I think the gunplay is a lot better. There obviously there are some issues, um, but I think that's kind of what goes with this type of game mode. You know, like a, an invasion and a rush, or what they call offensive. And you're gonna you're gonna have single points. And even if they do some sort of random, it's still like what Karma said, just putting bodies on a, on a single point. Um, so I guess that sort of comes with this type of mode. I know they have said that they're working on a, a new mode once they release. Um, so maybe, maybe that will be like a territory. Who knows? Um, so I'm curious to see what that is. So uh, Acid Pantalones, I am seeing chat. Um, I'm writing these questions down and making sure that I get back to them. Um, one that I want to get back to right now is um, you said that the meta of Postscriptum is basically just to hunt the MSPs. Uh, to cut the enemy spawn points off and 100 percent yep mm -hmm. so when i'm attacking and i'm squad leading i don't really care if command is telling me to do this because honestly i don't think commands like has rule over everyone playing but i'd always hunt msps even if there's only four dudes and you'd be surprised just taking out one of them like could change the fight and could take the point so yeah it's, it's sort of that's the meta is as attacking like at least hunt their msps you know, maybe the defender's meta will be, I've always thought about it, like having a moving MSP, you know, drop some guys down, then have it move and then set it back down, have it move. I don't know if that would work. Um, but I, yeah, yeah the, the meta is hunt MSPs. That's how you win this attack. I think the whole MSP and the bombing run meta is very unrewarding because of how easy it is to lock down an MSP. And then if your MSP gets locked down, you're running or driving a very long distance um msps especially with the commander option to bomb them so long as the commander just keeps one bomber free on rotation it's extremely easy to kill an msp and the only cat only counter to that is to continually move the msp around which therein amplifies that blob of no idea where things are coming from and just a a a 40 40 death match around the uh, capture point I um I will say that towards the second week, I saw more people, like the moment they knew MSP got spotted, someone would hop in and move it. Versus like the first week, it, it was always getting bombed. So I think maybe as people learn more, they'll maybe be a little more cognizant of 
moving it or not putting it too close. But yeah, it is very easy, even if it's not the commander, even if it's just one guy with a Piot coming in or a Gammon Bomb, done. You know, no one can squat and spawn there anymore. It might be the only one, and there's not enough transport vehicles to get around the big map. That's, and in my opinion, that's only w when the map is big, is when there's no transport vehicles to get around it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a couple. A couple more points on the infantry gameplay, just from my perspective. Um, the UI, I I have to say, I know it's it's like a, a, an immersion thing and that sort of stuff, but I I really just want the compass back on the screen. Um, I I'm not finding myself bringing up the compass at all. I literally just yeah, I, agree. I bring up the map and look to see whether I'm looking north, south, east, or west, and then use that, like. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. faster to look at the map than to pull out your compass. And I think if you're British, it's like north doesn't even have an end. I think it's just a box, and it's sometimes mm -hmm. kind of hard to see where it's at. I definitely well, even think then, it needs it, to be it, a compass. it jiggles around at first, it. right? You have to let it yeah. settle. Like yeah, I'm always using the map. Just that's just a map. recipe for getting players to not use it. You know what I mean? Like it's just I I'm I'm not a I'm not a fan of that. I just so much rather. Like, you, immersion's great, but it's a game. It's totally fine to do gamey things because players are just going to find the easiest way to work around it. Um, so that's that. Uh, the canteen. Are you guys using that at all? I use it all the time. All the time. All the time. Really? I guess I'm just yeah. playing the game wrong. Like, I, I sort of feel, though, like, as I'm drinking it and how long it takes to drink, like, every time I'm like, why the hell am I even drinking this? I'm already at half half my stamina, but definitely I I am I'm using it all the time because it it definitely helps, especially when you need to get into a point, you know, drink it before that way you can try to recover your stamina. Because as Carmel was talking about the suppression, like once someone shoots at you, you're already losing stamina. So having that that boost, I think, sort of fights that that stamina reduction once you start getting shot at. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm using it all the time. Okay. I, I yeah, I guess I'm just playing the game wrong right now. <laughs> that that's my like having like five six hours in in postscriptum inexperience. Um, yeah, I'm using the water all the time. Okay, I think it's well, tea. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> uh, bringing me back to pirate ops with that one. Um. Okay, so now we're getting into some areas that I'm going to be a little bit less. Uh, knowledgeable on just simply because uh, all of my gameplay has basically been as infantry. So what about vehicles? Like, have you guys run like a tank? And sure, that's my favorite thing to do. All right, yeah, well, it let's, is. Let's I, hear about I, it. I, I hate the infantry gameplay right now so much that I will literally exclusively play in the tank. Um, so the first weekend we were plagued with the same issues that Squad had with the tick rate and the uh, lag, which is where everyone could pretty much tell that it was using the exact same system as Squad because it had the exact same bugs and the exact same problems. Um, but they fixed it, which is good. <clears throat> um, but tank gameplay is definitely one of my favorite things to do just because it's it's a multi it's a truly multi-crewed vehicle, whereas in Squad, you kind of have like driver gunner, and that does have like a little bit of depth as far as teamwork. It has a lot of depth. As far as teamwork, uh, but having like four guys in a Cromwell uh, with the commander, the gunner, the driver, and the hull gunner, like that is an extremely immersive. You just get into it. You're you're like screaming at each other. Um, the the pacing of the tank gameplay is perfect. Um, the one thing I will say is I wish that uh like because they have the interiors and the turnout uh, all done. Um, the one thing that I will say is I would like to have some kind of damage indicator on the vehicle simply because in real life you would be able to see or hear or feel how damaged your vehicle is <laughs> we're in postscriptum right now you just you're just guessing <laughs> how how damaged you are right now you don't even smoke or go on fire like in squad which i thought was pretty in I, actually do you smoke i don't think you I think smoke you do. i'm not sure um uh a couple of complaints i do have about it about the tanks though are uh the how far they are from the front lines i feel like they need to add some kind of system where the more points you take the closer the spawns are for the vehicles like they don't get insanely close but just you know 
continue that distance because they'll get to a point where you're all the way at the last cap and as the attackers no one's gonna drive a tank 30 minutes to get five minutes of gameplay and and it's it's just <laughs> very it, it just gets weird like that um so now, i think uh, they do need to do something about that yeah acid pantalone says that the tanks are ridiculously slow that's I, what I'm hearing is that's the case. Like, it's really, it takes so long. It to depends get on the tank. The Cromwell is a very fast tank. The Cromwell hits like, I think, 80 kilometers per per uh, hour. The, the, the Cro- it depends on the tank. But some, some of these tanks, um, the SDKFZ is not a tank, but, um, you know, an armored vehicle. Or uh, what's what's the other German one that's, that's pretty fast? The Panzer III is fast as well so it depends on what tank you know the firefly of course and the uh the uh panther are extremely slow uh like extremely slow but i think that's a balance uh issue or or like a balance reason for that the only thing i will say is that the speed is nuts because uh of how far the drive-in is like for example, if you put that panther or that firefly closer to the, to the fight, to where you didn't have to experience that fifteen uh, kilometers per hour speed for thirty minutes, I think it'd be you know more enjoyable. But the fact that you have to drive four or five clicks to get into the fight just just makes it a, a grueling task to bring to bring tank those heavier tanks in. But the Cromwell Panzer three those those are really fast, and I think uh, you don't really notice it as much. Yeah, I think the fact that it's so slow sort of forces you to think about using it and how you're going to use it. Um, I really like the vehicle play. I commanded a couple tanks here and there, and like, yeah, like putting four guys together, working together, it's it's awesome. Um, yeah, sometimes it takes a while to to drive it, but um, it's it's hard. It's super hard. I think the biggest issue are, are the the infantry with the the lat kits because. Sort of this, you know, like you're saying about the head. There's so much AT. There's so much yeah. AT in there's, there's a lot. It's disgusting. And hedges. It's it's hard being a good like tank crew without an infantry taking you out or another vehicle. And I kind of like that because in squad you get someone in a warrior or Bradley. Um, they could theoretically wreck, you know, until wreck the, the server and kill everyone they see until they get damaged and then go back and heal and come back and do it again. I feel in this game. You you actually had a chance to take them out if if they weren't on top of like recognizing when they needed to move and stuff like that. Um, but a good crew still could could do a lot of work. I think in postscriptum, but they have to be I think working really well and communicating very really well for that to work. And I think it's it's a big plus in this game. Okay. Um, one of the biggest things that I just learned is uh i really need to catch up on my world war ii vehicle name knowledge yes 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 oh <laughs> uh, knowing the no it's just the tanks are such an in-depth part of postscriptum like knowing the name of the vehicle knowing the armor structure of the vehicle knowing the capability of their main cannon knowing where to hit like it's such a it honestly is is a little daunting at first but once you get the get used to it um I think it's really rewarding but definitely at first if you have no idea like the tanks and, and like what this does it can be very frustrating uh when you are hitting a tank over and over and over again and you think it should be penetrating but it's not so yeah it's definitely a whole element to this game yeah as far as the tank names like i don't know i just oh i killed the tank and then i'll say big big one or little one i could definitely <laughs> think it needs to be a, a wiki sort of like squad has i'm sure they'll get one eventually once they release um because yeah, not everyone's uh, like a World War II history nerd when it comes like tanks. See, what's funny is I I studied history in college and I have no idea about any of this sort of stuff. And that's normally like one of the bigger uh, foundations of knowledge that people come into like history degrees with is like they just love World War II. And I had no no knowledge of any of this stuff. Um. But yeah, so that's that's vehicles. Um, so we've got a question here from uh, Wellum, I think is how he's pronounced. But he says, the command structure in Postscriptum seems much more complex than Squad. Wouldn't that hinder the flow of public play? So I think that this is a great time to bring up the commander role in general. Um, what do you guys think of the commander role and the way that different 
squads have different roles with like the dedicated asset squads and that sort of stuff like what's what are your thoughts on i that? i think the structure that they have is amazing there's still a couple things that they need to do um the way that they separate infantry and armored squads really helps you know keep the assets organized like squads aren't just grabbing whatever they can get their ha hands on uh they are locked to doing certain roles and i think that's uh great as far as organization and it keeps stupid things from happening where like the entire team is just uh driving tanks or the entire team is just uh infantry with no logistics it really shows very clearly that each squad has a task and if there is no one in that slot you can very easily recognize that on the screen and jump in and either take that slot or uh, you know fill that in. So it does wonders for public play because it very clearly demonstrates the uh, com composition of your platoon. Um, a couple things about the command role for those of you that haven't played it. Um, right now, all the command role does is it has quote quote unquote authority over the other squads. So technically, like all the other squads look to the commander to get their their direction um it's not like a written rule or anything but it's kind of like implied uh and throughout the testing weekends that happened naturally uh as far as public play maybe it was because we were on the whitelist server and we had a lot of the ops guys in there but naturally everyone would ask the commander what they would want th th them to do and the commander would clearly you know organize the team so as far as organization within the team it really helps how they have it as far as the role itself, all you can really do as the commander is call in strafing runs and bombing runs. And you can only do that from either a fob, your main, or um, your command car. So the command role is really lacking as far as engagement because when your strafing runs or bombing runs are on cooldown, because there's a certain amount of time in between each one, you're kind of like just sitting there staring at the map. So I think they need to make the command role a little bit more engaging. But as far as how it's impacted gameplay, organizationally wise it's done wonders i think for public play well let me ask you this um how much of a like an authoritative role do you think the commander should play in this game like should they be giving orders and all squad leads listen to them or should they just be more used i think as the level support class with their support uh kit i think the, the level that we we saw in the play test which was the commander has the air assets but a lot of the platoon commanders or uh, not platoon but squad leaders just intuitively ask the commander what would you like us to do if that squad leader already kind of has an idea he'll tell the commander and 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 you know he's allowed to do his own thing um but for the most part i think people just naturally agree with that command structure and if they don't they're they're kind of the outlier and that that's okay we don't need to necessarily force people you know you do what the command says or you get out um because I think it's already kind of natural when you take in that role and when you have that commander above you, uh, it's implied by that kind of direction as well as it reinforced by the other squad leaders that follow that direction. And in my experience throughout the playtest, that was the majority of squad leaders. What happens if, let's say, you get a commander who's just giving out, in your opinion, really bad like strategy and tactics and stuff? I think... The people that have the most control in squad or in postscriptum are the squad leaders. So, so long as the squad leaders are in agreement to listen to the command, then the command is able to give out their or his orders. But if the squad leaders are in disagreement in the in their confidence in the command, then they'll tend to do their own things. So, it's it's kind of like a self balancing kind of scale where the commander doesn't have all the power. All the, most of the power is with the squad leads, but the squad leads give that power to the command so that he may better organize the team. And that only happens if you have someone you're confident in the command role. Um, so it, 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 it works out when... It, it, I know it's kind of complicated the way I'm explaining it, but for the most part, the, the squad leaders do have most of the control, but they relinquish that control to the commander that they see confident. Um, so if they don't have any confidence in the commanders, they tend to do their own things for the better of the squad or the team. Yeah, I only ask because in my mind, I feel the commander is more just a support class. You know, they they've got the off map. They don't really have off map artillery. They've got the the planes to come in, do runs, and drop bombs. And that's 
pretty much it. If I, if I got a good commander who's giving good orders, and yeah, I'll listen. But I mean, I had plenty of games where we had a commander who was was just making the wrong calls, yelling at people for not listening to him. You know, assuming that because he's commander that you have to listen to him. You yeah, know, see, and, and that's that's where I'm talking about that balance where if you don't make good calls, people don't listen to you. So it's kind of a, a self-correcting balance, right? Yeah, and like Asset said, they they are adding off map artillery as well, and which I think is just gonna further make them more of like a support. They're they're there to help the team, and and you know, because in the end, sort of like an ops and in squad, like we don't have a commander in squad, but sort of like an ops, like. It's your SLs who who have the most information. Like your commander doesn't know where all the enemies are at. You know he's there to give them a tank location. He's gonna drop a bomb, and that's really to the extent I really see them. Maybe a little bit of tactics, but it's as we we're saying before. It's it's one point. It's not hard to defend. Just get bodies on the point. Find out the general direction they're coming from, or in that way, and then change directions when they start move. Change that MSP. And that's pretty much it. So I really think a command is just, in my opinion, just like a support guy for the most part. Not there to like tell people how to do it nor should he expect people to listen to him so do you think that there should be like any sort of uh, requirements for someone to be a commander it sounds like for silence case my guess would be probably not because they're more of a support role for karma do you, do you think that maybe if you're going to allow somebody to take a leadership role that um they they should have a certain like uh, requirements for doing so well you ain't gonna learn it unless you do it and i think as long as someone has a mic you know and they're willing to learn then my opinion on that yeah i think um there there should be a, a mutiny option as far yes, as 100 percent. there needs yeah. to be a, like rising storm does you need to be able to vote kick the yeah uh, i think she the as far as commander because um that would allow the the server to police itself as far as troll commanders or inexperienced commanders. Yeah, definitely, definitely something I think should be added. Um, as far as commander goes. Okay. Um, one more question: If if the uh, commander you think does end up devolving into the sort of basically just relegated to support role um like silent is more seeing the commander as um do you think that it may run into the uh, project reality problem of somebody fills the commander role to make the strafing bombing run off map artillery and then leaves until the cooldown's over yeah i could see that definitely i mean do you do you think that's a problem if that's what happens I mean, it, it's a tough. It's I mean, a, tough a lot of answer. I think a lot of working? players. Well, even if they want to leave, a lot of players will want that command role and, and will sit in that command role. I don't think that's that's that big of an issue of people just popping in, dropping their their assets, and then leaving, because I think there's a high demand for people who want to play that role and want to sit in that role that whole game. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see it that often, you know, because I think people definitely do want that role. But I, I could see that happening. I don't think you, aside from the, the bombing runs and stuff like that, I really don't see how the commander could change the outcome of the battle unless the team really needs his like insight and and strategy. I feel most people are coming from squad and generally know how where to attack. And like I said, one point's not hard to attack. Um, so yeah, I could I could see that happen. I don't think it's going to happen just because how many people want to want to play it. It's fun. You know, it's fun to, it's very rewarding to work together with your squad leads and they'll call in a, either an MSP or a tank and eventually, you know, 20 seconds later, 30 seconds later, you get it with a bomb. Yeah, you know, I think it's rewarding. I think a lot of people will continue to play that role. Okay. So now obviously Postscriptum shares the off-world core with OWI and with Squad, um, the two development studios, Periscope and OWI. They work together um, for a lot of the things that they're, you know, maybe moving across games and that sort of stuff. So that's what I want to ask about. Uh, what do you see from Postscriptum that you think could be really great for Squad? Air assets. All right, air assets. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, the the fear 
I guess, quote unquote, fear I have, which isn't necessarily a fear because it would be good for us in a sense, is that both games, while they are separate, they're similar and they're sharing technology between the two. Uh, so they are both eventually going to become very similar games, I feel like. Uh, like Postscriptum is sharing its armor penetration system with Squad. Squad shares, you know, the animation system with Postscriptum. Postscriptum has the uh, air assets. Squad might get the air assets. Like, it, it, while now it is, this, I think right now is the most different we're going to see the games. Um, and I might be wrong. I could be completely wrong. They could be, you know, planning to go completely di different directions. But I feel as both studios figure out assets and and technology and systems those are going to get shared between the two because there's no reason not to they're both technically adding features to their game um the only thing is if they're able to keep their uniqueness while they do so i mean the question is i think how much periscope wa is wants to change this i think last i heard that they've always said that we're making the game you want to make you know if you don't like it don't right play it. the the thing is i think that uh, even though they say that it's going to it's just going to play naturally very similar to squad because it's using the same systems and assets like it's very hard to avoid that when you're using the same exact course system um you can add different features and all but unfortunately right now like even when you play postscriptum it still feels like squad and that's just the nature of using the awful of core So do you think that the the real difference will be in game modes and some sort of like gameplay, but everything else will kind of fall into place? Like if both teams are working on, if both teams want like armor penetration and one team figures it out first, then the other will just kind of like, hey, can can we use that? Can we, you know, pay X amount or whatever the deal would be? But can we use that in our game? Like, you think that's the system that they're probably going to go with? I don't know, because I'm not sure, like, how their contract works or anything. But, I mean, Postscriptum might be obligated to send whatever they develop on Offworld Core back to Offworld. Because it is their core. I'm not sure. Because I, I have no idea what, what, what they have planned or what they're, what they're doing contractually or, or otherwise. Um, but, yeah, it's... I don't know, but if anything, I feel like post we're going to see a lot of features from Postscript, Postscriptum end up in Squad, and maybe not necessarily Squad features end up in Postscriptum. Okay. Well, how about from a, a, a gameplay perspective? So you said you, you want air assets. Do you mean in terms of like just you want air vehicles, like you want a helicopter, or do you mean that like in the same way that you can get... Um, in, in in the same way that you can get a plane doing a strafing run, uh, you can get like an A ten doing a strafing run in squad. Like, is that is that what you're looking for? I'm sorry. Say again. You cut out on my end. Uh, sorry. Um. So you you said that you wanted air assets. Do you mean like you just finally want helicopters in squad, or um, are you saying that you want like the A ten to come back? I think strafing runs would be pretty cool to have and personally right now i feel like the amount of area assets in postscriptum are there's so fucking many um but i feel like they need to nerf the like i said the bombing runs in postscriptum because there's so many it's so easy to take out important assets with like a right click spawn spawn in a bomb um so i think they'd need to tweak it but i think seeing aircraft in a game adds so much as far as immersion it adds a whole nother level and sense of scale to a game. Um, like the first time you ever saw Spitfire in Postscriptum, it would, it was, it was, and it still is as far as, in my opinion, it still is a, a an awe inspiring moment. Um, seeing it and hearing it and, and seeing the impact on the battlefield. Uh, I think it's just a balancing touch that they need to tweak as far as in squad. Uh, because, you know, A-10s, bombing runs, and, and things like that would do massive amounts of damage to ir irregular forces, and the irregular forces don't necessarily have air assets. But seeing aircraft, I think just psychologically in a video game, especially an infantry-based video game, adds a huge sense of scale. I mean, would you really see the A-10, though? Don't they fly, like, a lot higher? 
you can still see it though you can even if it's if it's just a speck you'll see the impact on the ground you'll hear it right it's yeah, it's just yeah, a I sense mean, of, of scale. You don't necessarily need to see the plane. It's cool to see the plane. Like it doesn't have to fly real close to the ground, but it's real cool to have aircraft in a game. Yeah, I, I agree. Just like when the Stukas start bombing and you just hear it coming. Yeah, you don't even see the Stuka, but you hear you that hear siren. It. You're you're yeah. already looking and and trying to get cover. All right. Um I'm definitely with you on on the aircraft thing. Uh, I I I enjoyed playing around with the 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 A10 in game uh, originally when it was when it was in squad for that short. I think it was just like a one test weekend or something. Um, but I I think that ultimately I really like the aspect that you can see it. So when like helicopter casts or transport choppers, like I think that will be the the more rewarding and the more immersive part. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I I think that air vehicles for sure. I would like to see the dedicated asset squads be brought in. Yeah, that um, I, I I do like the uh, organization that Postscriptum has. Organization is absolutely amazing in postscript and you know what squads are doing uh you know you don't have to like you don't feel a rush oh i gotta get this asset first and like there's no rush because you are dedicated to that role and you do that role that whole time and and the whole team knows roughly what you're doing and it's just very it's very laid out and it's very organized and i like that a lot maybe it's because i'm like ocd about my stuff like that but it's just i like seeing just opening up the team and knowing, all right, we got two armored squads. They're running our armor. We got infantry, and we got we got we have someone that's handling super uh, the fobs. I almost said super fobs, but the fobs. <laughs> and so you don't have to go around and like continually ask on the comms. All right, uh, can someone bring the warrior up? All right, can someone bring the lodge up? Because you know, you have you have a secure feeling in knowing that there's a squad dedicated to doing it. Yeah, I, I think simply from the organizational standpoint, knowing that like. You know, if if that Lodgy squat squad spot is like open, and just knowing that like okay, we have nobody running it right now, like somebody needs to fill that, or I might need to fill that, or something like that. I think I think it's like you said, it's absolutely just amazing from an organizational standpoint, um, for sure. So we're hitting about fifty minutes. Um, we're gonna start wrapping things up, but first, uh, do you guys have any like favorite like? moments or like just the the like just a crazy story or whatever from from your gameplay over the two weekends um any just like awesome highlight moments um i think the most memorable moment was uh i was in a cromwell going against a panzer three and we were just my i was yelling at my crew to like move the move the tank up fire shot pull it back before they he reloads and like the tanks are just so well done. The teamwork and communication within the tank. And then the sound design of the actual rounds fired at you by a tank. Like you just hear that big thwang, right? As that, as that, as you see the yellow shell just go flying above you and you duck your head in real life. And it's just like, holy shit. And then you're reloading. You're trying to, you're trying to get your, your tank in the position to fire again. You you fire your shot and you hit, and you're just sitting in anticipation for that next thwang if it's gonna hit you or not. It's just tank gameplay in this game is like is like crack cocaine to me. Like I can't get enough of it. I want to do it every single time, and it's just it puts a smile on my face. Yeah, right. for me, um, not necessarily like any specific memorable moments, but. Plenty of times, you know, you're within like five feet or ten feet of an enemy, and you guys both only have bolt action. And you're just both of you just oh, taking yeah. shots and whiffing, and then you miss, and you pull out the pistols, and, miss, and then you miss all those. Yeah, and you chase them yeah, down because like, there's no it melee. A lot. Every time it happens, this reminds me of that Saving Private Ryan scene where they start the helmets. Um, I'd say probably my most memorable game though um, was probably when I was that lat kid and. You know, just every time crawling up with your minds and and play, trying to get two of them on there before they they blow up and then it's running back and watching it you know blow up the tank that way i think one time during that one game um i placed one mine on it to destroy it the commander saw me i shot him because he was out in the hatch 
one mine blew up and then t- two of the guys came out i shot them and the last guy drove away into a lab and blew up so it's it's i think lat's fun you know just sneaking around like always get that adrenaline rush and you're just crawling and trying to get those magnetic mines on onto the tanks um it's it's a blast nice um before i go over mine uh we have a claim in the chat from acid panelotes that i just have to bring up and ask if it's true um it says when karma was, was using a cromwell against a panzer there were a bunch of brits standing on top of the panzer to mark it on the map for you uh, is that that was something that I saw happen like multiple times is because like it's so easy to sneak up on the slow rotating tank turrets where like people will just be riding around on the enemy tank on the top because <laughs> because they can't do anything about it. Um, so that was always funny. Yeah, that happened quite a few times. Um, so because... does the, the the tank commander when he opens up the hatch, he has no gun, right? He can't. Yeah, you can just plink him in the face when he does that. <laughs> I, I mean, he should get a pistol so that he can defend guys he that are on top get, of the he tank. He should get some. I think that would be cool if, is if like when you turned out, you could use your primary and you know pull out your binox or, or whatever. Um, that would be cool. But I don't know if they how how import, how hard that would be to code in. Okay, um, for my own, uh, definitely it's it's definitely a moment, and it was uh, when I realized that tank rounds could skip. Oh. Um, Oh, that's beautiful. You the, see the, the sound design, yep. I was standing next to uh, a tank, next to a friendly tank, and I got shot at by an enemy, and I heard the round skip. Like, I heard it go by, and then I watched it skip and, like, start, oh, man, and, yeah, 100%. Like, you duck your yeah, head, tank rounds? you freak oh my out. God. I the would be... God. <laughs> I I haven't I haven't had the the chance to be in a tank yet. All of my gameplay has been infantry gameplay. Um but from the descriptions I'm getting and from what I've seen um just as a, a regular player on the server, I think it could be like super rewarding to when eventually mods happen or just like ask the the postscriptum devs like can we have like just like vehicle game mode? Like just yeah, tank battle. Honestly. Tank versus that that I would be so down for that like just just tank versus tank game mode and I think that would be like really popular too because this is as far as I know the only multi crewed PvP tank quote unquote simulator that I know of uh, War 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 Thunder and World of Tanks those are all single crewed you don't have like multiple people in the same vehicle so I mean honestly like. I would not be surprised if they completely pivoted. Like, I don't think they will, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just completely pivoted into, like, a a, a tank versus tank game. (laughs) That would be quite the pivot. Maybe it's the new unrevealed game mode, you know? Mm. Tanks only. Hey, I I would certainly be playing it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're going to end things here. I want to thank uh, everybody who hung around in chat and, uh, you know, talked it up in there and came out to see us. Uh, we do this for you guys, uh, and we can't do it without you. So thanks for coming out. I want to thank uh, Karma Cut and Silent for coming out and talking to me about their experiences in Postscriptum. Um, it, it's definitely a fun game. I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes, and I'm looking forward to get more time in-game. Um, but yeah, so this has been uh, the Squad Ops Opscast. We try and do this uh, every so often whenever uh, something important comes up or something really cool to talk about. And uh, we do this sort of podcast format. If you head to our Podbean, um, get yourselves into our Discord. There's a link to the Podbean in there. It has an archive of everything that we've done so far, uh, including a few uh, interviews with OWI devs which have been pretty cool. So yeah, um, that's about it. Uh, make sure you guys hop into our Discord and play some squad with us as well as some postscriptum when we, when those weekends are up. We run our own servers on that as well. So we look forward to seeing you guys there and uh, thanks. <laughs>